Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 249. I'm your host, Chris Britton. Let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Hero Click singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio again this week is my sexy ranch hand co-host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Let's get rowdy indeed. We have a boatload of news, like the Titanic level of news to get through. But here at Dial H, we like to normally start us off with what made us happy this week. Calder, what made you happy? Uh, mine's kind of like what made me happy last week or whatever, but I went to a WKO in Omaha, Nebraska, and I got, I did pretty well, I got made top eight, you know, it's like whatever, it's no big deal, and the, the part that really made me happy, though, was during um, top eight, someone was started there, he started playing some battle royales, and this kid, who had already pulled three Venom Captain Americas, pulled another one. And I was rooting so hard going for him. I'm like, hey, you already got one, right? So if you win this, if you win this Battle Royale, you'll trade that to me. I get first dibs, right, dog? And he's like, oh, yeah, sure, totally. I'm like, honestly, when I'm playing my game, I was more focused and like hoping that dude won his Captain Venom than I was on whatever game I was playing at the time. But he did it. The absolute madman did it, Chris. And I was like, boom, I'll do this right now. I'll PayPal you 80 bucks and I'll give you a Black Dwarf. And that's how we did it. I finally got Captain Venom, and I'm very happy that he's home. That's what made me happy this week. It's just, it's like a long lost child. Come back to the herd. A <laughs> mad lad status right there. Absolutely. All right. Well, what make, made me happy this week is very much part of what is going to be in the news section. But we broke a Dial H Twitter record, Ooh, like smashed nice. it into the ground. It's like the second place is not even a close distance from where we are now. Um, if you don't know anything about Twitter, there are things called engagements, and that includes people clicking on your links or viewing things, not just scrolling by in their feed. They have to actually do something with it, retweet it, like it, whatever. One of our tweets got 2,100 engagements. What? Which is bonkers for us. I, that is going to be like nothing to other things out there in the entertainment world and on Twitter. But for a Hero Clicks podcast, 20, 2,100 engagements is kind of a big deal. So It's awesome. Yeah, it, it was dumb. And it led to multiple new followers on Twitter, which I was really excited for. So if this is your first episode of Dial H that you're tuning into... Welcome aboard. This is how we like to keep things going. So we, uh, here at Dial H, we like to bring you up-to-date information about the game of Heroclix and other nerd-related content. So let's go ahead and jump into the news section. All right, so we're going to start off, off with something that's a little bit, uh, we're going to say mediocre some news and then crappy news at the end of this we got uh this is circulating all over uh the internet right now and we're not like 100 percent sure that this is accurate but pretty much the whole clicks community is agreeing that this is accurate right now so we're just going to go with it until we find out different but on the realms we got a uh, a post by a person named emperor joker and that's a person that's actually i mean they've been on for a while on on realms you may have seen their name before but uh, their post said, update on WWE clicks from my local game store manager attending Gamma, which if you didn't know, Gamma was this week, and that's where why we're getting a lot of these previews. Uh, figs will be sold individually in non-blind boosters with a $7.99 price tag. Let's stop there. We're going to dissect some stuff before we move on. Are you mad about this, Calder, or is this something you're like, yeah, I know what I'm getting? So, like, I'm happy and mad at the same time because there's a lot of kind of confusion with what's going on here. So, number one, I'm paying $8 for a figure. That kind of sucks for, like, a single figure. I honestly kind of hate paying the 4 or $3 for a gravity feed figure. Like, 
I heavily dislike that, so paying eight bucks for one. Now, that's like sort of counterbalanced by knowing what the figure is, which means there's not going to be a rarity in this WWE set. If there was, it would just be like, oh, I just bought the Chase Macho Man Randy Savage. There's only one, I guess. Like, it wouldn't make any sense. So there's probably no real rarity for this set. It's just wrestlers and that's it. You just, you get everyone's a common or whatever. It, it really just confuses me more than anything. So, A, I'm mad it's $8 a figure. That sucks. I think that's dumb. Um, I'm happy that I don't have to pull a million, like, Jerichos or something before I finally get someone I care about. No offense to fans of a terrible wrestler, but sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm going pa- to move past it. He's fine. It's okay. But, like, it's weird. So I was honestly looking forward to playing Sealed of this set. Sealed isn't exactly going to work. What are we going to do? Like close our eyes and shuffle around whatever box this thing comes in. Another question, what what big package are these single figures going to come in? Like, right? Like, is there a big box that's also just a big window? Is it a normal CTD and I've got to pull out a million of these to figure out which ones I want? Like, how does, I, I don't know how this is going to work. I'm cautiously optimistic. $8 sucks for a figure. But if I can just straight up be like, boom, that's stone cold, I'll buy them. I guess that's okay, Right. So, Maybe. so to me, this post or this information led to way more questions than answers. Hundred uh, percent. Why eight dollars? Why wasn't it six? You know, like why wasn't it five? It, I, I am curious how they came up with the seven ninety nine <laughs> price mark. It seemed pretty random, uh, but I'm yeah. like, oh, hey, this is with kids talking. I suspect. They're just in there like, what do you think we can get away with? And this is a business question, right? Like, businesses will always ask these types of questions. Like, what do you think we can get away with selling things for? Where where will the market agree that this is okay? And somehow, some way, they're like, $8 sounds good. Double the price of a random gravity feed booster or you know, individual foil pack. But at least you get to see what it is. Um, also, yeah, there is no rarity because you know what it is. But the thing is, and I saw somebody mention this online, I thought it was not exactly profound when it comes to the game of Heroclix, but as far as things in this game, it's the closest thing to profound. The secondary market is going to generate a false rarity system. Does that make sense? Oh, 100%, totally. So let's, um, before we go any farther, let's, uh, let's say these are the wrestler sculpts that we've seen so far. Just to sort of give everybody an idea of what we're talking about. We have Stone Cold Steve Austin, Macho Man Randy Savage, ugh, the Queen, Charlotte Flair, um, the <laughs> Rowdy, Ronda Rousey. But we have the Demon Finn Balor. Uh, I don't know who that last guy is, though. I think I know who it is. Oh, really? John Cena! <laughs> People are like, so, that, was, that was so staged. Yeah, so, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so let's just say the man, the myth, the legend, John Cena, has whatever, five knuckle shuffle, right? Free action. He does some dumb stuff where now you can't draw lines of fire to him and he makes a free attack or something, right? Like, just something weird happens, okay? If any of these figures is meta at all, 100% the price will go up. If they are viable in competitive, and that's what people are wondering. Like, I don't know if these wrestling figures are going to be. By the way, these sculpts, they're all gorgeous. Like, even John Cena, which is the most bland sculpt of all of them, is still really cool. Like, Charlotte Flair's sculpt is perfect for her, even though she's just the worst, and I'm, got yeah, the worst. Um, Macho Man's sculpt's amazing. Finn Balor's is great. Ronda's is, is good, even though she's also just, like, I mean, the worst. The worst. But whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> whatever. Getting past that, the the false rarity system is going to be 100%. If Macho Man Randy Savage does something like the cream rises to the top, whatever, it's going to be expensive no matter what. If it's the, the more playable it is, the more it's going to go up. And I would honestly wait a little while. Like, sure, buy your favorite wrestler right away for 8 bucks if you want to, but if there's a few you're unsure about getting, wait for the secondary market to kind of take hold and be like, sorry, but Charlotte Flair's trash, so she's only gonna go for like three bucks, you know, something like that. Here's so. what I here's what I suspect is going to happen, at least in some shops across the world. You are gonna have somebody go in because they know that shop is gonna get. Let's hypothetically say you get five of each of these figures, right, and in a set or in at this shop. Which, right. by the way, there are 18 figures confirmed in the first wave. So are we just going to assume there's 24 in a pack and then there are going to be some doubles or just 
18 I have fingers. No idea. But let's yeah, hypothetically see, so say weird. let's hypothetically say each shop gets five of each. So you get five okay. Macho Mans, you get five Ronda Rouseys, etc. Whatever. So you get a guy like me that goes in and he goes, I want all of the Macho Mans and all of the Stone Colds, and I want all of the insert extremely popular wrestler here buys all of them creates a fictitious secondary market where now instead of charging eight dollars per i'm gonna put put them online for 16 because i have all of them and the demand is still there so people are willing to pay more and you're gonna have like a bunch of stuff sitting on the shelf at random shops forever because you know you've been into a random shop and you're like man they still have bricks of Invincible Iron Man, or they still have bricks of Legion of Superheroes that no one's going to yeah. buy, right? No. And, and you're going to have these, like, is Ronda Rousey popular? Like, legit question. I don't know if she is. I mean, like, in a way, she's pretty much, I, I just hate her face. I hate her stupid okay, everything right. about Personality her. Personality aside, is she a popular character? Uh, I would assume so. There are people that – she's a pretty mainstream, like, common household name, you know, when she was in UFC or whatever. Okay, okay. So, okay. yeah, so, we can so, say she's just, popular. For, for the sake of this, let's just pretend they're, I'm talking about one of the least desirable characters that they release in wave number one, right? So they get these five figures, and they sit on the shelf, and they sit on the shelf. And you know the thing about Heroclix is it's always about the new hotness. So people want to buy everything the second it comes out. But two months later, depending on the set, most people don't want to buy any more of it, right? So yeah. I'm suspecting you get a bunch of shops that are going to be sitting on, like, insert character's name here pieces for years and then they're like well they're eight dollars and no one's gonna buy them and they're just gonna sit on the shelf while all the macho mans got bought up day one and WizKids does not have a really good track record of putting into like a secondary production of things that people want for not example really, no. good luck trying to get a brick or case of uh, the mighty thor right now Oh, yeah. Everyone wanted that, and WizKids is like, nah, we're good. We don't even really want to make any more of them. So that's what I suspect is going to happen with this non-blind thing. So it also gives me, as a buyer, someone who likes to buy stuff, I would normally buy a brick of whatever the newest set is. There is no incentive for me to buy a CTD or whatever it's going to be at this WWE set when I can just go and choose the specific figure I want. You know, instead of me spending you know, $70, right? 70 bucks on this set to hopefully get the one or two or five, whatever figures I want, and then just kind of do whatever with the rest. You're going to get like 16, 32 bucks out of me, maybe, you know, like it's, it feels like such a waste that they would make them open like this because now no one's going to be buying the whole thing. Unless of course there's one person who's just stupid, dumb and, you can potentially get multiple copies of, like, that's it. But, like, there's no incentive for me to buy a CTD of this set at all. It's just, like, I guess I'll go here unless, of course, someone buys up all the Macho Mans, and then I'm like, well, great. That sucks, you know? I, it's, it's so weird. I'm so worried that what is going to happen is not only are you going to have characters that are popular. So, first of all, there's, like, different generations of wrestling viewers, like, there are different generations of comic readers, and, you know, like, some people really like the Silver Age of comics, and some people don't really like the New Age comics. Well, guess what? When I was a kid, that was when the WWF was around, you know? Like, I really like, in the, in the WCW, so, like, I really actually like Macho Man Randy Savage. I really like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't know who these new wrestlers are, so I'm not going to take time out of my day to go and learn who these new wrestlers are. I suspect not many people will. Uh, if there's anything that I've learned about the game of Heroclix and, and interacting with the community over the years, um, a lot of people don't care about the source material at all. They just want to play the game. Yeah, yeah, you get some comic book readers out there. Right. Yeah, you get some people that watch the movies out there. Yes, that happens. But... If they are reading some of the source material, they're not reading very much of it. Like, you're only a DC guy, or you're only a Marvel guy, or you Trekkies. Like, how many people, when we went to Origins last year, how many people did you see that were sitting down at the uh, Star Trek sealed? Like, uh, there was, like, like, a dedicated four-ish people that were playing Star Trek Battle Royale. And they were Royale. not bouncing over to the Marvel no, table or the DC table. And guess what? The Marvel and the DC people were not bouncing over to the Star Trek people. So... My point is, I'm not going to learn about Ronda Rousey. 
I might go by Macho Man Randy Savage or Stone Cold Steve Austin. So if you get like this over like weighted side, then you're gonna get a bunch of Ric Flair's daughters that don't sell. You're gonna get a bunch of people Thank you. All right, buying so. <laughs> the, like <laughs> buying the secondary market of Macho Man Randy Savage, and that's what I'm worried about is not only if they're popular, but also if they're good. So oh, sure. if you get a meta Macho Man Randy Savage, that crap is going to be expensive, like really expensive. So I'm legitimately concerned about that. Uh, moving on. Uh, they plan on Silence doing – a... Yeah, we could. We really could. Uh, they, they plan on doing a total of 50 figures, I guess, or 50 characters. There is no mention that they won't do duplicates. Like two Undertaker right. or whatever. So we don't know if it's going to be so 50 that, unique wrestlers. So it gives me another weird question. Are we going to do a shifting focus Undertaker, like with the hat or with the biker getup, you know? Like, are, they, are we going to use two of our 50 slots for shifting focus characters? You know, how are characters with objects going to work in these weird single packs? There's just so many questions. Yeah, we, uh. we basically just got this just enough information to ask 5,000 more questions. Yep. Uh, and it says if this does well, then they will release future waves of 10 to 12 figures. Okay. All right. Whatever. Here's something that I did. This was my favorite thing that I found online this week about this. It, this also comes from the realms from this guy named Uniclonus. His response was like, oh, I'm, I'm – I'm jumping ahead. This is something that was also part of the Emperor Joker post. He said, also confirmed that G.I. Joe, Transformers, and My Little Pony will not be hero clicks. Only untainted miniatures. So I guess throw out all hopes for all of that that was going to come out. See, I was honestly a little skeptical when Hasbro did the whole partnership with WizKids. So, like, Hasbro makes their own board games. And I guess this is kind of the answer, where it's like, no, nah, we're not going to give money to technically their competition, right? Because they're both board game companies, mm -hmm. but now they're like unpainted miniatures. Just all the all the excitement people had for those, all the what if scenarios in their mind were just destroyed. And now that everybody's just like, ugh, whatever. Well, remember when we got the news? I explicitly said that they don't mention hero clicks in this at all and as and soon they as they came out with orville they did mention hero clicks so just based off the fact that they didn't i was like there's a pretty i mean it's kind of likely that they're not making clicks out of it otherwise they would have specifically mentioned clicks yeah still uh, sucks yeah yeah super disappointing uh what could have been there is just i mean whatever major disappointment but um uniclonus on Realms, responding to that news, gave me my favorite answer on all of Realms this week. And he said, well, I'm now no longer interested in WizKids having those licenses. That news removed my interest. I now have the opposite of interest. I have negative interest. There is a sucking void where my interest previously was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. So oh, wow. I think... That does actually echo what a lot of the feeling in the Clicks community is right now based off of that information. Uh, yeah, I mean, for sure. I, I don't know what else you can say about it. I mean, there's a lot of disappointment, and there's a million questions about WWE Clicks. So unless you have anything else that you wanted to talk about there, I figured we could probably just move on since we have so much news. Let's move on, man. Okay. Now. Get into some pretty cool stuff. I'm genuinely excited about this. X-Men, the animated series, the Dark Phoenix Saga. We got the first slides at Gamma showing us some of the sculpts, and not just the sculpts, but the specifics of the sculpts, which are really, really important for this. Oh, in insane. that there are two-by-two two figures in this set, which means this is looking like a rehash of Avengers Infinity, with Colossal Boosters. I'm super excited. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. All right. Uh, first slide, we have 2x2 yep. two two Phoenix, uh, regular base rogue who is not flying. I saw somebody mention, like, oh, we got a rogue that's not flying for once. They were, for some reason, excited about that. Not sure why. I love this hair rogue. Like, finally, we get my, my Southern Belle rogue. I love it. I, I know. Man, the X-Men animated. We get, we get a, a so crouching Wolverine to add to our million other crouching Wolverines. That's right. awesome. Love it. Uh, 
So the pre-release <laughs> event begins in August of 2019. The release of the actual set is going to be September of 2019. Uh, on the next awesome. slide, we got a two by two. Looks like just a generic Sentinel. Uh, we got yeah. Jubilee, which I oh think yeah, it's, it's been a minute since uh, we we've had a Jubilee. People are exceptionally excited for another Gambit. We have not had a game yep. in, I think, like seven years or something like See, that. I love it. We, it's kind of like waiting for the bus. You haven't had one in a long time, then two show up at once, and I, I love know. it. And really, it's, it's kind, great. Of, kind of three, but we'll get into that when we get to the That's stuff. true. So, Ooh, uh, ah, we, what do they mean? We got, we got a, a saber tooth. I'm like, yeah. yes, all right. Now, this is the Sabretooth costume that I'm just so used to when I was a, a kid growing up. We got a 2x2 two two Nimrod, which looks dope. Um, I, and quite honestly, I don't know. There's two figures left on this slide. I don't know which one makes me more excited. Storm in her white costume from the animated series, which looks awesome. She's flying, and it looks like she's flying off of, like, clouds which I think could be a really, wow, really yeah. cool sculpt. And then the other one, which you are never going to get again in the he history of Heroclix, is Morph. Morph is such Morph, a, dude. a oh cult my following of a character. I'm like, I, I mean, yeah, it makes sense that they made him for the set, but also it doesn't make sense that they would have ever made him in the game of Heroclix at the same time. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. No, no one was like, "Oh, we need a morph hero click," but they they made one, which if it you just didn't know, feels nice. Yeah, uh, morph. By the way, was actually that particular morph. He was created for the animated series, so he didn't even exist outside in the comic books. Just thought that was a little interesting bit of information. We'll but um, right there. Oh man, so, such good stuff. Okay, so that's that, I think that's all that we have for. Um, on the same slide, just to go over it really quick, it says it confirms there's going to be a Fast Forces and then a Dyson Token Pack. So like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah. cool, very standard fun stuff for the set. Oh, they did release another slide for uh, four yep. more two by twos. We are getting a two by two Mojo, which seems a little weird because I don't think he's Mojo's that big. Weird. He's really big in this. Like, that looks crazy. I've, I've not seen a episode of the show or whatever it's supposed to be where Mojo is portrayed as this large. Yeah, he's, like, crazy, crazy large. Um, I'm guessing if there's that much plastic on the figure, he's going to be one of those figures that you can just tell immediately when you grab the booster. You're like, oh, this is probably Mojo. So, yeah, I feel like his legs are going to break. Like, I really hope his base is connected to the dirt and not just his legs or whatever, because ugh, it looks like it's going to break so easily. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, we It looks like one of the other ones is a stealthed sentinel uh, shooting, mm. like, some laser beams out of his hands. Um, the other two, I had to do a little bit of research into... I, I love one of them. I love it to death, dude. Oh, Which my gosh. Is it? It's that the Iceman Megazord thing he's got going on. It yes. is so sick. So, here's the thing, and this is one of WizKids' downstairs mix-ups. I feel like they just had to, like, find things to make into a 2x2 two two because that's not from the animated series. That's actually from no. the, uh, the Wolverine and the X-Men comic. Uh, it's Iceman making a gigantic it, – it, I swear, it does look like a Megazord version oh. of Iceman – um, just really tall. So that's that's from the comics. That's not from the animated series. The other one is also from the comics, not the animated series. And that is um, – that's Shadow King in the astral form. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's kind of so so at, that. at one point in the comics, Shadow King fights Professor X on the astral plane, and they both take um, these visages of, of warriors. So that's the one for Shadow King. He kind of looks like um, – Oh, uh, he's got a flaming sword and battle armor yeah, on. Cool. The Professor X, if they make if make one of him, which seems kind of likely, if they made the Shadow King one, he looks like a gladiator. Is is what he does. He's got like a shield oh, cool. and a gladiatorial helmet, and he's got a sword too. So that's how they fought in the comics. There you go. You he see, he's also a giant robot looking thing, or well, he doesn't actually look like a gigantic robot in the comics. That that just it looks like uh -oh. it in this. Uh, but I, I posted okay. on Twitter, uh, I posted a picture of, like, from the comics, directly taken from the comics, of what they look like so you can look at them. 
and he doesn't really look like a, a robot. He kind of looks just like oh, just a right. big suit of on. You know how Onslaught doesn't look like a robot, but he kind of looks like he's very angular and yeah, I know. That's what you're kinda, same yeah. thing. And then Professor X's uh, astral form also kind of looks like that. He's a little bit more rounded, but he's a gladiator. So. Um, Hopefully we'll get a Professor X. I mean, it'll be the only Professor X that we'll ever get in astral form that's, like, a two-by-two. Two. Like, that's not, yeah, not going to ever happen again. I mean, we've had an astral uh, form Doctor or, uh, Professor X before. Remember the oh, through yeah. one? But, I forgot about him. <laughs> yeah, so this is just another version of that. So uh, I think that's it for the animated series. That is it for else? the animated series. Uh, I'm just excited. I'm honestly not the biggest X-Men fan, even, but, like, I'm going to buy a lot of this set, because I really like it. Yeah, it, it looks it looks really good so far. I'm really excited about that. Um, another thing that I'm excited about, one last thing on the Marvel side of it before we jump over to the DC side of it, and that's going to be new information on X-Men Regenesis, which is going to be the summer event for 2019 uh is there any particular thing you wanted to talk about first, Calder, in this? Uh, no, not really. We can just go through some of the sculpts before we hit any other dials, if we even want to discuss those, honestly. Okay, well, we did get some sculpts that are directly told to us are going to be prize figures, so let's mention those real quick. Uh, monthly prize kits, uh, one for June, July, and August, so three months of prizes. Uh, it looks like we have a Danny Moonstar on a blue base, a Archangel on a gold base, and that looks like the Angel of Death. So that's when he's a... Yeah, it looks person. awesome. Um, mm -hmm. There are two black base figures, and I believe... Well, one I'm pretty sure, the other one I'm not, I'm not positive on. Uh, the Gambit, so that's... <laughs> okay, I guess we have four Gambits, really. Uh, that gambit is the uh, horseman of one of the horsemen of apocalypse. So why has he got like white hair? I'm just really. <laughs> That's how you know he's one of the horsemen. I don't know. They just needed okay. to show that he was different in the comics All at right. the time. So that's yeah. how you know that he's one of the horsemen. That Magneto, though, I don't know what that is. I think that no just helmet like a, Magneto. It's kind I of. I think it's just a yeah, just a no helmet Magneto. I don't think he's actually one of the horsemen or anything okay. like that. Next slide, we got three gold base figures. One of them is Wolverine, which looks like a, a sculpt reuse almost. I, it, but I, it looks really close to how the um, Xavier School sculpt looks, like really close. Pre, I mean, but they've made so many Wolverines. At some point, like they gotta start looking the same, you know. Uh, that's true. Yeah. So there's that. We've got an Iceman in brown shorts. Uh, pretty unspectacular in any way, but yeah. the first time we've ever gotten a Warbird. So That's who that is. I was curious. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know who this chick is at all. So Warbird is a Shi'ar, and she was sent to Earth to guard Gladiator Kid. Gladiator oh, cool. Kid is the son of Gladiator. He is royalty. He did, he went to the Xavier School, kind of like um, when Wolverine was the headma or the yeah the headmaster. Like he's replaced okay. uh, Professor X at the time as the head of the school, and when he does, they get uh, Gladiator Kid to attend the school. When he, and that's kind of like a um, uh, kind of goodwill building between the Shi'ar Empire and Earth, you know. So. He's going to school here, and then as part of the requirement of him coming to school here on Earth, they send uh, Warbird as his personal bodyguard. So it would be cool if she cool. had a trait that did something with Kid Gladiator, since we actually just got one of those not too long ago. Yeah. That, that would be interesting. I doubt it will happen, but it would be – if it happens, flavor-wise, you know why. Uh, the three other figures that we got on this slide are uh, – looks like Hope Summers. Scott Summers and Emma Frost. Emma Frost is doing her diamond form. All of these are on blue sculpts. Anything you want to say about those? Yep. Oh, I think this is our first crouching Cyclops. So, yay, we're making progress with these kids. Good job. <laughs> um, Hope's sculpt and Emma's are really cool. Actually, I really like them a lot. Uh, so that's really sweet, honestly. Um, I'm impressed by how the sculpts look because Civil War sculpts weren't all that action-y at all. So... I'm kind of happy that these ones are looking a little better. I agree entirely, actually, because thinking back now on Civil War, 
it had a couple of really awesome sculpts in it, especially with the cap and the Iron Man that you could push the dials together and it made it look like oh, yeah. from the comics. That was awesome. But the rest of them were like really, really bland. Like Spider Man was just standing there. Uh, Cold Heart was just standing there. Like they're not doing anything. These actually no, they look weren't. dynamic. They they look like they're moving. There's like a lot of energy flowing off of different characters. So like uh, Gambit has energy coming off the staff. Hope has energy coming off of her hands. And we got another one, which is Rachel Summers. She's flying, and it looks like there's fire shooting out behind her. Magneto's got little magenta balls coming out of his hand. I don't, I don't know. They use that color in the comic, in the comics all the time. That's to true. Powers to indicate his powers. Um, we got that Magneto sculpt, but with a helmet on, with a blue base. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. The Rachel and another Gambit have the yellow bases. So. I just really like colored bases. I think that they're really, really awesome. And yeah. just genuinely excited to always get more of those because, I mean, black bases are okay, but it's just more fun. Dude, you know? I like the colored bases so much, and I really miss the colored bases on Chase figures, like, a lot. I, I think they're so cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so that's it for those, the sculpts. There is something that I wanted to talk about because – through what I can only imagine was a lot of aspirin. Some people managed to cool. piece together. Yeah. We got pictures of the cards, but you cannot read anything that's on the cards. They are almost, rough. Almost at all. Which leads me to my next comment, which is, if you go to one of these shows and you take pictures, can you at least not take pictures with a potato? Like, they're so bad. But... They're I mean, bad. we appreciate what we got, but I mean, come on, guys! Like, a little, like, hold still for just a little bit extra time, and you might actually, it'll focus. Uh, but someone yeah. managed to, or maybe a group of people managed to, bat back and forth information to the point where we looks like we got our first dial that we can kind of decipher, and that is that gambit. And the reason I want to talk about it is because it's unprecedented in the game of HeroClix where we've had this happen. It is the same figure. It's it's the same everything on the figure, but it looks like we're going to be getting two different cards for each one of these figures. One card looks like it's just a, like a black banner at the top, and then the other card associated with that figure is going to be um, the ones that we got are yellow, but I assume that the other ones are going to be blue as well. So like the, the right, ones yeah. that we got the the ones for just all happen to be blue base figures but the yellow base figures i assume that their cards are going to do the same too um no i guess magneto's blue and gambit's yellow isn't it so that that's works. true uh so gambit 80 points for range x-men team ability keywords marauders x-men and then they are introducing a new keyword called gene gray school high school higher learning um he has improved movement hindering and a trait and this is what this is how you know like they're switching back and forth between cards. If at the beginning of the game Gambit is on a Jean Grey School of Higher Higher Learning theme team, replace the character card with the alternate card. So I I guarantee you every one of these figures that has uh, the banner across it, it's going to have two of these cards. Yeah. And if you look real quick, I mean, everything's identical except for some of the wording on the powers. Like, even the powers are named the same things. But the powers right. do different things based off of which card you're going to use. So with with uh, Gambit, he has a special attack power, and it gives him free choose one, energy explosion, force blast, quake, or giant reach two. Um, Gambit you can use this the effects this turn. If you use him on this Jean Grey School of Higher Learning theme team, instead of an X-Men theme team, you can use the alternate card, and it just changes the wording of that attack power to Gambit can use Energy Explosion, Force Blast, Quake, and Giant Reach 3. So there's no free action to choose one. You get all four. So yep. in a way, it's, it's a good thing if you already plan on playing the Jean Grey School of Higher Learning keyword. But if you don't want to use that keyword, you just want to run him on an X-Men keyword, you'll get the choice instead of having all four of them. So you, with the restriction, you get the bonus of having all four. But without the restriction, yep. you at least get a free action. And 
all of them do something like this. It's like an additional little bonus with the character if they're on that specialty keyword. I don't know what the blue one is, what that what that keyword is. Uh, we're gonna find out real soon. But it's really interesting how that they. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. I mean, they're they're effectively kind of making like half of a new figure. So I feel like this is just to help them be more balanced in sealed to make it more like easier to play and all that, so they're not bad in sealed. And you know, you're gonna have a theme team, right? You're gonna choose three Wolverine or three Cyclops boosters, and they're all gonna be, you know. Gene Gray, School of Higher Learning, or something else, whatever the keyword is for Cyclops. So I feel like that's just sort of to help them balance and make them a bit more, just better in Sealed. And that can also help them in, in the normal game, I suppose. They do, they are better, arguably. They're, they're 100% probably better when they are part of the theme team. But like, they're still really mediocre dials overall. I can't tell the point values. How much was that gamut? Gamut's 80 points. And. Okay. I- I actually think that he's a really good figure outside of Sealed in just an X-Men theme team. First of all, it's been seven years, so, I mean, you, oh, yeah, so you, you just have to be ex- accepting of what you got here, to be completely honest. So he's, he's, what, he's like 80 and 50? Is that what that is? Something like that? I, I think. Yeah. It's just so blurry. You can't oh, dude, it's, it. it's close. So for 80 points, the only bad thing that I really see about this figure is that his range is only four. He's got running shot with 9 speed, 10 attack with that special attack power, 17 defense with ESD, which is great, 3 damage with perplex. Yeah. And I forgot to mention he has a trait that gives him stealth and sidestep. So that is really, really good, and it looks like they made it pretty accurate to the comics version of Gambit. Like, that's how he fights. They made him a close combat piece with the with the force blast and the quake, but they also gave him giant reach because he has the staff. So like it really makes sense. It looks like they did a pretty good job on this game, but I'm, I'm hoping to see some of these other figures and, and hope that they're really good versions of the characters as well. I can't read much on the Magneto, but it does look like Magneto has flight nine speed with running shot, 11 attack, which is good solid attack value with a special attack power that I don't know what it does. 18 defense, solid, special defensive power. I don't know what it does, but I suspect it's going to be like an energy shield deflection. And then he has four base damage with leadership. So that's pretty solid for a Magneto, what you would expect out of a Magneto. I think we're just going to have to wait for a little – I mean, who knows when the next bit of information we're going to get about these and their dials and stuff like that. So it's just like – you know, that's what we got. You just kind of have to accept that's what we got and appreciate yeah, what it is. Gotta be patient. Gotta be patient. This is gonna come out was like June sometime in the summer, so like it's not terribly far away, at least. Yeah, yeah. But so yeah, it's it's not bad. I am pleasantly surprised so far with what I've seen from this event, from these event pieces. Really yeah. excited about the animated set. That looks fantastic. Um, do you have anything else that you wanted to talk about in? X-Men. Uh, no, I actually am excited for it. You know, I am I am really happy. I like the unique take they're doing on the Summer OP kit thing. So, you know, get on with kids. 100%, man. Okay, moving on to the next one. We got slides for Black Panther set that's coming out. We got, uh, let's see, pre-release event begins May 22nd of 2019. We have a new Doctor Strange. We knew about the Infinity Gauntlet. There's a Hulk in there. Um, this is the one that I kind of wanted to talk about because I figured there were some of these fi- some of these characters that you wouldn't know who they were. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, so on top left, Stick this, Guy. Stick Guy. That's actually the Gardener. He's one of the elders of the universe. If you want to go look at him, uh, they already made him once in the Infinity Gauntlet set when they made all of the other. Uh, Elders of the Universe, and I was I was looking at it to see like which ones have been made recently and stuff like that. Well, we we did get some not too terribly long ago, but not they're not good. <laughs> like like they made that Grandmaster back in Age of Ultron, but it got oh, knocked yeah. into the ground because they changed the way the cards work. And remember, he added that special power where you're like you make your opponent guess what the numbers are going to be on the next click of their 
you know, their figure. Then they click it and see if they're right. If they're right, they get healed. And if they're not, then they take damage. But now with the cards, you can just look on the back and you can get it right every time. So, like, that really That's sucks. That's true. So there's a new Gardener. Um, we got a Black Panther on there. We got a Proxima Midnight, which I'm exceptionally excited about. So it's like, cool. It's really cool. You know how much I love the Black Order, so that looks awesome. On the top right, there's, like, this wingy dude. That I was like... Okay, so you don't know everybody. Come on. Yeah, I do. It's Rune. His name's Rune. Uh -huh. Whatever. <laughs> um, he fought Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> the Gargoyles of New York. Uh, yeah, right? That should be what you need to get sure. with this, kids. What are you doing? Not giving me my little pony yeah. clicks. But, yeah. uh, so, Rune, I, that is so strange. I mean, it is a Marvel property, but I'm pretty sure at one point it wasn't, and then they, like, acquired it. Oh, weird. So... Also, since he's, like, an enemy of Conan the Barbarian, I'm like, are we going to get a Conan the Barbarian hero click? Oh, man, if we get a Conan, that'd be so sick. Oh. <laughs> like, really weird. On the bottom right, we have possibly a generic Dora Milaje. I'm not sure if that is or if that is one of the named ones like Ayo or Okoye or there's numerous Someone. other ones. Uh, the one right next to her, do you have a guess on who that is? Dude, I know who this is. I love this. This is AI Iron Man from Secret Empire. I'm excited. I like this. Uh, I like this a lot. Yeah, so at this point in the comics, Iron Man's effectively quote-unquote dead. And he's in a coma he or something. Oh, yeah, like, he, he's out of commission. So he has an AI consciousness walking around in his armor that is being the, like, mentor of Riri Williams, Ironheart. So, yeah, it's cool. Uh, it's cool. Pretty legit. Bottom left, I don't know who that is. Spider guy. Man with no, three things yeah, no. coming out of his I know. back. It's so weird. <laughs> um, I, I know that blue one is supposed to be the Cosmic Cube. I have no yes. idea what this yellow one is because it's completely, like, bleached out yeah, right now. Yeah, I can't really tell what it is. Now, to be – additional thing that I noticed about this. Notice that comic, the Cosmic Cube is a single square item. Yep. But it looks like whatever this is that's bleached out, this item is a two by two. It looks big, right? Like it's Yes. I don't know if that's just because it's closer or what it's supposed to be, but it looks really big for some reason. And I have no idea what it is. I, I really don't know. Now, that's what we got for the slides, but someone did manage to take some pictures of actual sculpts. And the only other thing that we didn't mention from that slide that is shown in these pictures, we got a it looks like a generic aim uh oh yeah b suit guy now this one is white which leads me to believe that it is from the new avengers run where uh sunspot buys aim which means that this might be an aim figure with the avengers keyword oh so is this the what was it like the U.S. Avengers, it was that run yes. where Sunspot buys AIM, I think? Yes. Okay, yeah, cool. Because there are cool. also red and blue AIM people. So yeah, like, like, that's what an awesome. easy, What an easy way to reuse Sculpt to make AIM <laughs> so red, easy. blue, and white, or red, uh, white, and blue. It's, it's, a, it's weird to say it in any other order than red, white, and blue. It is, dude. Is that not saying <laughs> red, white, and blue? Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> okay, we got uh, Rune, which looks like he is a super rare uh, that Dora Milaje looks like it's a rare, so... Probably it's going to be a named person, but it might also have a sculpture use and be generic. I, I really don't know. It, it <laughs> looks like, if you if you zoom in on it, it looks like the word Dora, but I'm not Dora sure... Dora like, the Explorer. Why would they put Dora without putting Dora Milaje, you know? Like, yeah, fair. It's, it's one additional word, and it'd be really weird to not put that... Uh, the last figure that I see that is different is uh, we finally, for the first time ever, clicks is going to be the new Falcon, which is Sam Wilson, Captain America Falcon's sidekick Falcon, who is a genetically uh, Falcon he's man. He's like Hispanic or Latino or something. I can't remember. He actually has like Falcon eyes or whatever. I can't remember yeah, his name. He, I think he's, he went by Red Wing or the Falcon or whatever for a while. So, yeah, no, it's cool. He's actually really cool. I, you know, read some of him in the Sam Cap comics, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, he, um, he's actually, like, his DNA is mixed with a, an actual falcon. So yeah. It's, neat. it's weird. Um, okay, so we got a new Captain America. Looks like Houston! Okay. 
We got Captain Fire. America that looks like a common 95 points. He does have Indom, as Captain America always should. Two additional things, two last things uh, for this June 19, 2019 release. One is there is a champion in the background. That's the guy with the pink hair and energy flowing out of his hands. That's another one of the Elders of the Universe, so that just confirms that they're making more Elders of the Universe. And now, the thing that I wanted to talk about the most, that is the Infinity Gauntlet. The actual thing, the Infinity Gauntlet. It looks like that is a Chase Rarity. Is that not correct? No, it's 100%. That is Chase Rarity right there. But it's an item. Okay, so let's slow down here, guys. Remember how the Mighty Thor had items that went with chases? They also had a chase rarity tab. So it probably means we're going to get a Thanos or somebody who wields the gauntlet, which could be, I think, almost any member of the Illuminati or something like that. I don't know. I didn't read it. But, like, apparently they all held it or whatever. So just because it has a chase rarity and it's an item doesn't mean that it's just the item as a chase with no character. Like, my Thunderstrike figures got its little Thunderstrike tab is is a chase rarity. So it's not necessarily means the item is going to be just a chase. Like, that's it. It's a chase item, you know. It just means that it might come with a character. This is what I assume, anyways. I believe that you're probably correct. Here's what I don't understand. This gauntlet is the size of Captain America. Why did they make it this big? Why did I don't know why that big? so big, dude. Like, all the recent, like, Thanos's or whatever we got, like, the gauntlet's not even that big on Thanos's arm. And he's, like, the person that's made for, right? Like, this is like a Hulk-sized hand, like a colossal Hulk-sized hand for the gauntlet. Like, it's, it's huge for some reason. Yeah, a little weird. Also, because it is a 2x2 two two base... Is, what? It, is it a 2x2 two two base? It, it certainly appears to be a 2x2 two two base to me. I don't think it was that big. Wow. Alright. No, actually, you know what? Never mind. I don't let's, think it is. let's nix that I'm seeing things in my head that I thought I wanted to see. This is never, never mind. But it is really very large. Um, it is the large, one, yeah. I feel like it had to be that large because it had a dial, you know, and they wanted it to be pretty long, and it had, like, a bunch of clicks on it, so they had to make it a 2x2. Two two. Maybe that's why I thought that it was a 2x2 two two as well. I was just, that could be it. Just being dumb. But this one doesn't have a dial, and they still made the the gauntlet like enormous. Huge. Also, Huge. also, it's a right-handed gauntlet. Oh, let's not get into. Let's just not. Let's just not. <laughs> all right, fine. We'll it's it's whiz kids. Yeah, they they got the downstairs mix-ups all the time, man. Like like it's par for the course. Um, all I'm saying is the old one is a left-handed gauntlet. Just saying. Uh -huh. so there's no consistency. <laughs> all right, that's all I got on Black Panther. Do you want to move on? Uh, I want to talk about Captain America more, but fine, we can move on. I mean, what else can you say about it? We don't he's not shifting it. focus, man. I'm so sad. Okay, I'm, I am true. excited that he's 95 points. Maybe we'll get a really solid Captain America. Probably going to be a, a kind of generic cap, though. But um, I don't know. I was hoping they'd continue with shifting focus. Maybe they will. I don't know. But uh, that's it. That's cap. Finally, we have a Captain America with the ricocheting bullets effect off his shield. It's really cool. Yeah, that actually looks really sweet. Um, I'm not going to lie there. Well, I like it. Uh, okay, we will move on to, and this is why we need somebody who is a huge DC fan on this podcast constantly, because we don't know much about DC. We got some information about the Rebirth set. Now, we are going to know who all of these people are in just a few weeks, so it's really not that big of a deal that we don't know who they are now, um, but we do know that there is a Mr. Terrific that is going to be in the Rebirth set, which yep. Mr. Terrific is a fan favorite of a lot of people. Like, you, you know how, like, Moon Knight is, like, there's a cult following behind Moon Knight? Oh, there's, yeah. There's a cult following behind this Mr. Terrific as well, specifically that Mr. Terrific. I don't remember what his name is, but... this is. Are you talking about the, dude, the Tron disc? Is that Mr. Terrific here? The Tron, Tron disc? That's supposed yeah. to be his... Uh, his terrific balls that are hovering around his hand. Oh, right. oh is that what it is? Supposed to... Oh, okay. <laughs> I think they're called T-spheres. <laughs> but... They should definitely be called terrific balls. I think that that's probably a better... Much better. better. 
Yeah. Um, we did get, we, I mean, we knew a lot of these already. Like, we already knew about the Damien Wayne. Dude, they're showing us so many of these ones we've already seen before. It's really weird. Yeah, and then and Beast Boy and Raven was already there. And so. the other ones that they showed, I honestly, I don't know who they are. Like, we had this, like, nondescript soldier-looking person in the middle. And I have no idea who that woman that I think has a fro on the top left is. And then, is that... Earth 2 Superman? No, that's Lex Luthor. No, this is one I do know, and I love it a lot. This is uh, Man of Steel Lex Luthor. So after the gods of Apocalypse, the whole Justice Gods thing, after that's over, Superman is thought dead or whatever, and Lex Luthor becomes Metropolis's Superman. And it's actually, there's a few really good books. Um, one is called Imperious Lex, which just deserves so much love by that terrible name. Um, I, I really like this a lot because he's like trying to be Superman, but obviously he's violent, you know, and he, he also is like calls Superman a bunch. Like he's like, hey, what's up, man? Check this out. Look what I did to my suit. Like he's totally broing it out with Superman all of a sudden. And there's some really good banter between them because Lex Luthor is still Lex Luthor and Superman is still Superman. So they're still different, but they're still working, but they're working together. And it's really cool. So I really he's probably going to be a super rare, which is a bummer. But I really hope he's good because I would I would love to be playing this Lex Luthor a whole bunch. Like I I really like this look for Lex Luthor. I think it's a really cool like you know suit. I think it's really sweet. So I'm really excited that we're getting him. All right. Well, I'm happy for you because I know how much you love sexy Lexi. Oh yeah, sexy Lexi baby. <laughs> I couldn't okay. I couldn't make the last sexy Lexi work in competitive. Let's hope this one is uh, is different. A little bit. Put him on a little bit better team. for you. A little bit better. Yeah, hopefully. All right, that's it on the previews that we got from Gamma. That was so much stuff. I'm really, I'm just, I'm looking forward to what we're about to find out from uh, the X-Men sets. Um, also, we didn't, notice how, like, all of the Rebirth previews stopped? Did you know? Yeah, that? Like, did the no, actual dial? like, we didn't get any. Once once Gamma started, it just seemed like, oh, Gamma's the news. Like, we didn't get any, uh, any... Any more previews at all? Any more spoilers? It's weird. And I, I knew some people online, like, they made comments about that. They're like, I, I wanted more spoilers for DC stuff, because, you know, all of those DC fans are not really caring about all of this Marvel stuff that we got. Totally and it is a lot of Marvel stuff. Sorry, but, guys. A few, a few weeks in a row, that was, like, all DC stuff. But at the same time, we're probably only going to get one DC set this entire year, so you, you want to milk all that information about that set. For as sure. As humanly possible. So... I was I was just kind of looking forward to seeing more of the the metal chases and seeing if dude they were like the last couple of metal chases were just like so bad I, I'm honestly I they, they kind of weaned me off the idea of the metal chases honestly I told you That's I was not, like oh my favorite one is the the flash one and then it just ended up being like hands down worse than dude Flash's like I was like I couldn't wait to see what the Doomsday one did and it's like okay I guess. But, like, don't take any damage because your attack values are terrible. Like, I was bummed. I was like, ah, come on. That would have been the one chance I probably would have bought. I guess you can save all of your money trying to blind pull chases from Batman Metal since you don't really want any of them now. And you can spend all of your money trying to get all of those Ronda Rousey's. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, I will honestly, <laughs> Ronda Rousey is going to be the new Mary Marvel for me. Like, if I see her sitting across from me, I'm just going to be like, I wish I had a baseball bat and I could just destroy that figure. I'll give you $8 to let me destroy that Ronda Rousey figure right now. Please. It will give me so much joy. I'll probably buy them all just so I can just crush them. Honestly, I hate her so much. But that's a different <laughs> thing for a different day. So, gee whiz, Chris, we sure did have a whole bunch of previews and spoilers. Uh, that means we're going to have a whole bunch of new stuff to play. Now let's talk about all that cool stuff that we're not going to be able to play anymore in this year's bum ba da ba HeroClix 2019 Modern Rotation. A lot of people kind of speculated what would make the cut and what wouldn't, and now we finally have a concrete list that WizKids went ahead and put up on the website. So these are the following five-figure booster sets that will be rotating into Golden Age as of July 1st which is after Heroclix National Championships that are June 12th through the 16th at Origins Game Fair. You know, also at Origins Game Fair. I was <laughs> just saying, that was Heroclix. Anyways, so, five-figure booster packs. Uh, Civil War is out. Superior for Spider-Man, gone. Joker's Wild, out of here. Deadpool and the X-Force, dead. Avengers Defenders War, not existing anymore. And Marvel Heroclix, what if, is, is, is out of town, folks. But you know what survived? 
Elseworlds did. The little two-week gap saved Elseworlds. Oh, boy. Another year. Another year. Oh, Green Arrow. Woohoo! All right, so what does that mean? That means we're not going to have any more Goblin King, thank goodness. No more late death floating around. Joker's Wild, no more Jakeem. Th- oh, I guess he wasn't really a problem anymore. Whatever. Uh, so, yeah, stuff like that. That's all gone. Um, Fast Forces packs are, of course, Spider-Man, TNG Ninja Turtles, Heroes in the Half Shell, Batman and His Greatest Foes, of course, the Ninja Turtles Shredder's Return, Uncanny X-Force, Deadpool, Merch for Money, and Marvel Knights Fast Forces. The starter sets, the What If starter set, the micro sets, slash CTD sets, uh, so Ninja Turtles here is an actual. So Team NT two, Team NT three, Guardians of the Galaxy two, and the Wonder Woman set are all going to be Golden Age. Oh uh, no, here... not my Etta Candy! I know she was so incredibly <laughs> mediocre. Um, the convention exclusive game elements that are no longer whatever. There's a whole bunch. All the KC it's figures so gone. Much. Batman with the bomb surfing, whatever. What you need to know, like what is what's still in. The Pimp Tank is still in. Earth X Captain America is still in. Uh, Casey Jones is gone. The Shredder is gone. Turtle Van's gone. Punisher Van's gone. Jack Frost and Grey Gage. So why is the, whatever, the Tank and Captain America and all those other ones, why are they still here? Because they're only three-ish years old. I think they rotate out almost every three years. Like, I think they came out in 2017, but were spoiled in 2016. So they last three years, which is why it, I, I still think it's weird because, honestly, uh, all this stuff felt so old. It was like Cosmic Daredevil and Rocket and Groot and the Punisher van, you know, because they all had the old cards and stuff like that. Like, they felt old, you know. So uh, monthly organized play kits, bunch of stuff. The Toy Soldier, Batgirl, Alpha Flight, uh, Justice League 1, the Defenders 1, the Injustice League, Captain Cold, Sinestro, Lex Luthor, the Guardians of the Galaxy 1, the Star-Lord, Sculpt, and stuff like that, Brave and the Bold, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, blah, 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 Gana Smash, Red Hulk, She-Hulk, A-Bomb, blah, 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 White Lantern Corps with the Martian Manhunter and Jade, blah, 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 Sinister Syndicate with the Dr. Octopus Rhino. So that's actually kind of cool, Dr. Octopus is gone. It wasn't really seeing a lot of play anyways, but Dr. Octopus is rotating. So, whole bunch of stuff. But mostly, Shredders are gone, which is great. I love it. I still never had to play against a Shredder team, like a Shredder-heavy team, you know, like more than one on it, which is really cool, so I'm okay with that. I'm not, I'm really not tearing up about everything that's rotating, you know? I guess Shifting Focus Deadpools is kind of a bummer that that's going to rotate. That that does kind of suck. Uh, Hydra Cap rotating is a bummer for me, personally, not a lot of other people. But I'm not really broken up about this Golden Age list, because we still have so much new stuff to play. Um, probably the one I'm going to miss the most, oddly enough, is uh, is Overdrive. Like, really, he was just such a such an easy go-to, boom, he carries four people. You know, we still have a few more months of, uh, of these guys left, but I, I am going to miss Overdrive when he finally rotates. And that's like, that's honestly, this uncommon figure is the one I'm probably going to miss the most. What about you, Chris? What do you, what do you feel about this rotation? So, straight up, some TLDRs really from all of that so just takeaways reiteration really is any OP set that was made in 2016 that's gone if you use some kind of convention exclusive game element you can probably still use it because the stuff that's rotating out you weren't using it anyway uh past that is there is there really anything that we really lost it looks like the game is not going to change that much right now uh, honestly, no. So, like, what Shredders. what it are we looks, losing? We're like losing Shredders. Shredders. We are losing Goblin King. We're losing the uh, Machine Gun, Hawkeye, you know, the one that keeps running, shotting, and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Overdrive, for sure. And a couple of other little little characters here and there. Civil War had, like, no meta presence, any at all. No competitive presence at all. Nope. Which is a shame, sure, because one of the greatest sculpts ever, Iron America, Captain Iron America, is in that set. But, like, they just, they just weren't viable and competitive. Like, the one you could say... Maybe it was Taskmaster, and even though he wasn't that great for 80 points. So, yeah, like, we're going to lose quite a few characters, but we're not losing, you know, Unimine, Starro, yeah, all sorts of... We're not losing anything that's totally linchpin to the whales, since the whales got a pretty good uh, mini, you know, a mini Shredder replacement with Venom Captain America. So I still feel like... The Menace is not going to be totally shaken up, except for the fact that Hawkeye, Green Arrow, whatever, like, all those characters actually fly first. You know, it's going to feel weird not having him. But also, Hawkeye's kind of being replaced by all sorts of other characters that can keep making attacks. So, ain't that neat? Sure. Sure it is. Because we got Vulture and Ronin now, you know? Like, we got new I Hawkeye. Guess, I guess Yondu's gone now, too, but... 
you didn't really see a lot of that. <sighs> Sadly, you didn't. There wasn't much in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 that, like, did yeah. a lot. So, yeah. So, it, last thing I'm going to say we can move on is this might be the least ground-shaking rotation I have seen since they started doing rotations. Yeah, I'd have to agree. All right. For sure, man. Uh, second piece of news, the ROC posted... All the dates, states, and provincials, province, province, Canada places, whatever, provinces. (laughs) Well done. (laughs) Anyway. Ah, whatever, I can get through life without knowing how to say words. It's fine. I'll only alienate a few Canadians and, like, whatever. They're, they're sorry for me for getting it wrong. Like, they'll apologize to me. Like, come on. Let's, it's fine. They they posted all the states and dates for the states and provinces, whatever, tournaments. Okay, it's pretty cool for all the ones in April anyways. So, it looks like they are between April 6th and the 14th-ish. They all seem to be, like, the smallest is the, the 6th and the biggest is the 14th. So, a couple of things I thought were really interesting uh, was the fact that what well, was it? Right here at the bottom. Wyoming didn't have an ROC, I think, in the last few years that were actually, you know, in Wyoming. The last one was in South Dakota for Wyoming, hosted it, and that was the last one they ever did. But Wyoming is having an ROC this year, so I'm actually really excited. I've never been to Afton. Um, Wyoming is a state I don't like, and that's not because I, I hate it. It's, it neighbors South Dakota, right? But I only oh, ever drive... Oh, okay. Yeah. This whole time you kept using that word... Wyoming, and I had no idea what you were talking about. It's a state. It's yeah, got it. Right. Okay. All right. So it has one of the smallest populations ever. It's driving through it is, and I'm not trying to knock anyone in Wyoming because I've been there a million times for rodeos and all sorts of other stuff. Well, okay, really just rodeos. Yeah, it's only rodeos, but that's kind of what they're known for. Like their license plate's got a dude riding a bronc on it, anyways. But I'm really excited. This is just for fun, LLC. Like honestly, this is what makes me the most excited. Like I seem like okay, cool, South Dakota, they have theirs, whatever. Everybody else has theirs. That's neat. But honestly, the thing that impresses me the most is that Wyoming has one because I went to Cheyenne and all sorts of other places to try to find a comic book store, and I didn't find any hero books there at all. And I've never been to Afton where they're holding it, but I honestly kind of want to drive to Wyoming April 13th just to uh, just to go and see. We'll see what it's like in Wyoming. Like, if you're from go, Wyoming, get on go this guy. Claim, go claim Wyoming for Dial H's home base in, the, in that random shop. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like Because when I went all those years ago, I couldn't find Hero Clips anywhere in that state. I'm honestly, I'm just impressed they have a shop that's letting them do an ROC. Like, I'm, I, I'm really, I really am happy. I'm, I'm, like, I'm super happy. So uh, I'm excited. They're, they're in all sorts of other places. There's, of course, Hawaii, Georgia, Florida, blah, 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 blah. No, we'll have the link in the podcast show notes, so you'll be able to find all of them. Um, so find your state. See how close the city is, where the ROC is. Maybe you live in it. Maybe you live near it. Either way, it's pretty awesome. So go ahead and enjoy the ROCs. Now, these state tournaments are going to have the Chase Prime sets of the Mighty Thor as prizes. So if you make top eight, awesome. You're pretty much guaranteed a, you are guaranteed a Mighty Thor chase, and if you make top 12, whatever, you get a freaking prime, which is awesome. Like, the worst prime is the Red Leader, and he's still good, so it's, it's not bad at all. I think the prizing for this ROC is great, because the map is terrible. It's not a knock against you guys that make the maps, it's just not a movie map, and thus it's kind of lame. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Okay, so the prizing actually ended up bringing that back around. That's pretty legit for me. No, dude, it's great prizing. Like, that's pretty it. good. Pretty good stuff, so glad to hear that. Okay, do we have anything else in ROC news? That is it, my man. Pretty right. sure. But we finally yeah, did it. it. We finally made it through all of the news that Holy we have. Holy smokes! Look at all that news. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's okay. Hopefully it was entertaining, and uh, that's what we like to do here at Dial H. We work off the value-for-value value model, and our goal is to entertain you guys and gals. So if you feel like we give you value in your life, consider showing us your love and jumping on our Patreon. You can earn your heroic rank, your heroic title, like Citizen Vigilante and Protagonist. Uh, and don't forget that you will always be credited in the podcast show notes and mentioned on the podcast. Anytime we mention your name, like when you jump on our community section with that title. So speaking of community, let's jump into that. There are dozens of us. Dozens! You know, instead of this week starting out with our normal Community Tuesdays question, because he's just been such a good sport about it and waiting so long, let's start off with Malcolm Rush's question block. (laughs) 
Carter, do you have these questions? I do. So, not so much. Man from Japan. He writes in so lovingly. With St. Patrick's Day around the corner. Today, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sorry we had to keep pushing this back. I feel really bad. But, hey, look, now it works totally perfect. Uh, he's got six awesome questions once again. So, number one, which hero clicks, equipment, relics, dice, or maps bring you the best and or worst luck in the game? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, Chris, so you got one? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to umbrella... S- a lot of my answer is going to be off of this comment right here, okay? I have really, really terrible luck pretty much no matter what I do. There are a handful of things that have stood out in my past, very rare occurrences that have been full of luck. Ant-Man box set, Ant-Man Legacy of Hank Pym box set is probably one of the best bits of luck I've ever had. I rolled two, uh, I rolled two sets of double sixes in a row after a prob, and then rolled a six for blades with an ant, and it was exploited, so I did seven Ooh, damage man. straight through with an ant. That was, like, the best luck I've ever had in the game of Hero Clicks, and I will always remember that. Past that, I just try to skew the game so I don't have to worry about luck. Like, as this much guy. as I possibly can. Like, uh, I'll put characters on there with, like, three perplexes so I can make my attack 15 so I don't have to worry about missing. You know, like, if I ever need a, a seven, I'll always roll a six. This is one of the reasons why I don't do competitive events. In addition to just not liking competitive events, I just have really bad luck. So, like, to answer that question, I don't really have anything that really stands out for me because I just have really bad luck in general. Um, so I'm going to just choose, like, your host character. For some reason, I don't even know Sam Cap that much as a character, but Samantha Wilson, Captain America, that chase... Um, she's been a character I've been playing, like, nonstop on almost all my competitive teams. She brings me solid luck. I almost always make top eight when I play her. It, it's awesome. Like, I'm not even an Alpha Strike-style guy, but I just like the offensive capabilities that she can do. Um, equipment, um, I guess the Venom Harness. I pulled off some pretty awesome stuff with the Venom Harness this last WKO, so I really enjoyed that. Uh, oh, relics, I don't I really just have remembered one. one. I oh, just remembered it. one. And this is a relic. Not good luck. This is just exceptionally bad luck. I will never use the original Cosmic Cube ever again with as many times as I have dropped that thing. It is a (laughs) one-third chance to drop that. It's like you roll a one to two or something like that. If you use it for Perplex or whatever it does, I don't use it anymore because I will always drop that thing. And I was like, nope, it's not even worth it. It just just made me so mad the number of times I used it. I think I realized my favorite relic is the uh, the Nova Helmet, Charge Flight. I always thought that was sick. Um, dice, so it used to be, these turned into worse luck. So it used to be my Gravity Pro, my Up Dice, whatever. They're called, like, Up Gravity. They're on CoolStuffing.com for, like, 13 bucks. They are really awesome. They have a cool magnetic case. I really like these dice. They come in red, whatever. I like just the color gray, so I got gray dice. I know it's bland and boring, but whatever. So they're really awesome dice, and I you can tell I've used them a lot because they're all worn down, the, and, like, the paint's really worn off. It's awesome, but... One night, I rolled three crit misses in, like, a single game, and I was like, that's it, they're retired, they're done, I'm, I'm over this. Because I was playing a team, whatever, it doesn't matter what team I was playing, it sucks rolling three crit misses, it's terrible. So, I started using my new, these Captain America Earth X dice, and I'm not having the same luck. Almost every Battle Royale, I get second or first in, except for, like, one time where I just had terrible pulls, but, like... My dice have almost always hit every attack. Like, I maybe miss one attack in a battle royale with these Earth X dice. So I'm, I'm really happy that I got a sick pair of Captain America dice that are doing really well for me. So that's awesome. Never had bad luck on any maps. I don't think maps... Like, they can totally affect the game, but, like, I can't say that they really made me feel superstitious about them. Uh, mm-hmm. Number two, do you have anything during or before a game that gives you good luck uh, slash superstition. Chris, do you do anything before a, g- a game to give you uh, some good luck or to hype yourself up or whatever? Like, what's your, uh, what's your, what's your routine? Uh, usually a sacrificial goat, you know? Just for like, sure, for sure. Lead that into a, a bowl, drink it, is my typical go-to. Um, no, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't really have anything. Although, I do, I do want to go back to the last question because I did remember. Oh, yeah. I, I have the dice from... The, I think the original Thor, the Hammer of Thor uh, starter set, you know, they have the little hammers. Oh, yeah, yeah. The little little Mjolnirs on it. Those, for some reason, are slightly, not hand, you know, not a lot, but slightly better than my other dice. I just feel more comfortable. Uh, 
I guess. Like, there's a thing to it. I don't know. I don't know. It's luck. Like, how do you describe luck without just getting into, like, ambiguous terms and things like that? That's true. Yeah. Uh, no, no, there's nothing I do because I don't think there's anything that I can do to affect it. Maybe I need to start doing, like, chants and dances and stuff and, like, wearing lucky underwear or something because nothing works. Sure. Um, I never call my hat lucky. It's just, it's just my hat. I just like wearing it. So it's not like a lucky thing. That's not why I wear it at all. I just like wearing my hat. Um, but I would say, honestly, when I do competitive tournaments, um, I actually take a bathroom break between each round and I, uh, splash water on my face and slap myself a few times while I look in the mirror and say, <laughs> I got this. I'm not going to lie. That's what I do. So it's super weird when the bathroom isn't like a single person one and someone walks in. Yeah. Uh, but that's honestly what I do. Um, I started doing that. I used to try to always have waffles or pancakes in the morning of a competitive tournament. Uh, but now that you, when I travel with other people, they kind of like, we kind of dictate where we go and you can't always get waffles or pancakes. So that kind of sucks. Um, also when I'm on the road by myself, um, this is only a few times I listen to a ton of country music. That's like normally when I'm on the road, I listen to podcasts, but before a tournament, I, I try to get the rowdy blood going and I listen to, uh, my playlist personally. And then I'll see, try to find the local country station and see what they have. But if it's a lot of that pop country, just miss me with that stuff. All right. So that's kind of what I do, uh, to, to get me going for, uh, for a tournament. That's sort of a, a good luck thing before games. Uh, number three, what have you seen people do to give that person good luck or bad luck to their opponents? This seems so weird. Um, do you have one for this, Chris? I've seen people, like, actually blow on their dice before. Like, that does something. Uh, like in I, Vegas, that's... like how they do that? Okay. Yeah, I've actually seen people do that. I have seen people refuse to roll on the table from their hand. They have to use a dice cup. Like, that's going to drastically affect... Now, dice cups have their purposes, right? And prevents your dice from flying across the table. True. That's apparent. Yes, that definitely works. But I've had people tell me, like, they won't roll dice on the table. They think that it's bad luck. Um, so huh. they'll, they'll use dice cups. Past that, I don't think I've seen anything that's, like, really weird. Uh, nothing like I, – I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's <laughs> – this this could be a thing if it is for luck, or maybe people just smoke a lot. I've seen people, like, between rounds, like, every round they have to go smoke, like, a little ceremony or something. Maybe that is for luck, or maybe – uh, Some people get nervous, man. You see that edge off, I guess. Pass that. I don't. I don't really know anything. I've never seen. Like honestly, I don't really have a good answer for this question. I've never tried to give my opponent bad luck. I honestly, I, I think most of the time I say like good luck. I think most people do. Like shake hands and say good luck before the match. So I, w I would never. Uh, even if it's like national, world championship, whatever. I'm like, I sure I don't want my opponent to win, but I would never say I hope you have bad luck this match. You know, like I wouldn't. <laughs> you know, would, is that considered bad sportsmanlike conduct? I would totally say it like, would be, right? Like, 100%. <laughs> like, you sit down, and you look at me like, I hope you roll like crap. Just like yeah, right I, I would honestly, if and then like if it was, I'd be like, you know what? I I would I would honestly be like, I want to beat this guy so bad, but I would I would be so mad that he said that. I'd be yeah. like, this is really what a deep what a deep no. egg. Like just be, be nice to each other. Now, uh, I have seen yeah, people. Right. I think we've all done this. Switch dice in the middle of the match, right? Okay, so uh, let me just say something. Like, if you're going to switch dice, all right, just so you know, ROC tournaments, you have to only use one pair of dice. And once you get down okay. to the top, whatever, you use rock dice, right, for higher up ROC tournaments like states and stuff. In normal tournaments, but I definitely I've sure. seen people that, like dice. regular no, no, you games, can't. regular tournaments. In, in normal games, you can totally switch dice. There's but they do this gets us no specifically because they think that the luck that they are having with those dice can be rectified Change and switch to other out. dice. Yeah. I have so dice I mean, that I that I feel like they roll terribly, which is why I never use them. Like Okay. Okay. I'm Maybe switch, that's a thing. It's like that. So here's another thing though to keep in mind. If you're gonna switch between dice, don't have like four or three pairs of dice and keep switching every time. It adds so much time to the game. Oh my gosh. Just have two. Quit being so indecisive. This is not a knock against anyone. It's kind of a knock against one guy in particular. But, oh my gosh, just, just like, <laughs> stick with one of them. Don't be like, oh, that rolled terribly. Now I gotta go back to Spider-Man. I'm like, no, just stop. Just choose one, alright? Have bad luck with one, switch, and go with that one for the rest. Quit swapping back and forth. It doesn't make any sense. Oh my gosh, it took so long. So like, if you're gonna switch between dice guys, just do like one, once. 
You know, just like, oh, I'll use these instead. You know, don't be, don't be switching every other attack every, every time. Come on, please stop. Stop. All right. Number, uh, where were we at? We're at number four. We're in a game. The dice gods decided to give you bad rolls. No, I think that's the dice one. Okay, cool. Uh, number five. Uh, have you just, um, have you played against a hero who's piece that should be easy to beat, but you just have bad luck playing against it? Yes. One okay. piece in particular, Yellow Lantern Superboy, I think from a War of Light set. Is that the set that it came out? Yeah, probably. probably I yes. don't know why, but historically, I have always, always rolled horribly against that piece. No clue why. It has always been like you need a seven, you roll a six. You need a you need a nine, you roll an eight. You roll, you need a four, and you roll double ones. And you're like, really, really? Uh, that I've had historically bad luck with. And then one trait in particular on one piece, my own piece that I've used a multitude of times, and I just stopped using the piece because I don't know why, but it made me so mad. Uh, Avengers versus X Men Scarlet Witch trait to cancel out people's uh, power cosmic. Oh yeah. I don't know why, because you have to roll for, like, every figure on the map, right? I would, I swear to God, I would roll and I would cancel out my own power cosmic on my own figures, and my opponents would sometimes just be like, nope, looks like I get to keep it. I'm like, really? Really? And I'd spend 100 points on this figure for nothing except for to cancel out my own crap? That just did not work for me, so I stopped using that piece a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Dude, that sucks. It's a one through six? Oh my gosh. And you, fa- oh, what a failure, Chris. What a failure. What a it doesn't failure. doesn't make any sense, but it's a thing, I swear. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess it really, really be like that sometimes. Um, was it played against here? I don't really know if I have a figure I have bad luck against. I hate playing against Mary Marvel, so maybe I have bad luck against her. She's really more beatable nowadays. Um, I just hate playing against her because I had to play against her a bunch of times when she came out. And I'm like, you know what? She sucks. And I'm tired of seeing her. So, yeah, I'll give us Mary Marvel for that one. And number six, how lucky are you when opening boosters? <laughs> okay, so I don't buy them anymore because I'm that unlucky. The one time ever that I've been really lucky was when I, I went in into a shop and bought one pack, and I actually pulled King Thor. Past that, Ooh. I do not get nice. lucky. It, is, it, is not, it has gotten to the point where I will refuse to spend $12. I will just buy pieces individually for $24 a piece because there's no way in hell I'll ever pull it. It's just not possible. So right. not worth it. I have gotten lucky with some sets. Um, so I guess I haven't gotten lucky in like two years, really. Um, so the first time I noticed that I was really lucky when buying boosters was probably the, what, Uncanny X-Men set. I think I bought one booster of that set, um, and I pulled like that Chase Magneto with the garbage cans he throws around. And then I drove, I, so that was in Sioux Falls, and I drove over to Rapid City, which is on upset into the state of South Dakota, and I also pulled a uh, Magneto, Chase Magneto, which was, like, really cool. I'm like, oh, nice. And then I ended up buying, like, two more boosters, and it was, like, that Cameron Hodge dude. But I also got Prometheus, who was also, like, a $45 super rare at the time, so I had really good luck with that set. And I only bought random boosters. I did not get a brick of it, because I'm, I'm not, I'm going to be real, I'm not an X-Men fan, and that set didn't do a lot for me, the Uncanny X-Men set. Um... And then the next time I had good luck was also an X-Men set with Deadpool and the X-Force. I, my brick was so bad. Um, I got the common and uncommon primes. I got the super rares I didn't want. There was like three super rares I don't want. And it's Cannonball, Lady Death, and Sheikla. And those are the super rares I got. And I was so mad. I'm like, this sucked. I wasted like a hundred bucks on this brick. And then I go wherever. And I buy four boosters, and they had a they had pretty much a case and some other bricks mixed up together. I pulled Golden Age Deadpool. Um, this is another really plain looking Deadpool. It wasn't the pirate one; it was some other guy. But I pulled two Deadpool chases, and then I pulled Swarm and Hellcow. Like, like I was like, wow, these are great four boosters I just pulled. So that was really cool. Uh, I really like. I had great luck there. Um, recently, I suppose you can say Earthox. I did do a few different pre-releases. I got a super rare, 
Not every time, but this last time when I did it, I bought, I did get a Chase Spider-Man, which is really cool. So that was pretty sweet. So I, I feel like I have good luck. And obviously when I say like that stuff, like, sure, good luck buying boosters, but I don't buy boosters that much anymore. I used to, it used to be like, you know what? I'll only buy a couple of boosters in the set. And like, that's it. Guardians. Okay. Let me talk about the time I had terrible luck. Guardians of the Galaxy. All right. I was, I'm on that zombie high, right? I bought my brick. I always just buy one brick and I got my, Chase Zombie uh, Red Skull, which is the one I wanted the most because I'm a Captain America fan, so I wanted Red Skull. Then I proceeded to never buy another brick of that set, and I only bought single boosters, and I bought all the single boosters I saw when I could see them. So I probably opened 40 more single boosters, and I did not ever get another Chase, ever. That was terrible. Bad. It was really bad. That was probably the worst luck I had to set, and I mean... In the time that set was out, I went to a couple different states. I was traveling all over. I went down to three different stores when I went to Las Vegas that year, and it was oh, it was terrible, dude. I got nothing. I I had so many. I was sick of that set, honestly, because I had so many rare like Thanoses and other garbage characters, like Super Giant. I'm like, I'm tired of looking at these people. I just I hate it, I hate it so much. So yeah. That was one set. I was oh, dude, all the Inhumans. I'm like, gosh, I don't, I don't want to look at stupid Lockjaw and this chick with her <laughs> hair anymore. You know, I was, I was done um, with that set because I didn't get any. So like, that was probably the worst luck I ever had was Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's not. The I question. do have, I have one bit of luck, and it's you're not going to see this very often, realistically. I don't pull well, but like when we sit down at Origins. I'll pull pretty much like mediocre pieces, not like chases or anything. I never pull chases. I don't even think I've pulled a super rare, honestly, at Origins where you're doing Battle oh, Royales. But because my opponents always pass me stuff that I actually like, oh, I can, I think I can do something with this, it leads me to end up in first. And then Ooh, not only nice. do I end up in first based off of what they pass me, so it's not what I pulled. It's what they gave me to choose from. And then on top of that, landing in first, you know how Origins works. They just come around once the game is over and throw random prizes down in the middle of the map. Right. Two times I won first, and two times they threw down lock jaws in front of me. So Scumbag. Scum, I, I mean, so like, it's not like I, like I didn't pull well, but I did well in the map. Did on the map and like my playing did well enough and then it just happened to throw down a lockdown. So I guess in that one regard I did really lucky. Oh right. It's, it's, but actually like buying packs, man, I just won't buy them anymore. So that that's all I got. Do you got anything else? That's it. Those are Malcolm. This is Malcolm's questions. Um, before we head all also right. to the community, did you want to do a little uh, thing? Eric Cave sent us. Super fan Eric Cave oh. sent us. Yeah, go for it. All right, so he went ahead and said this might make for some good discussion. Um, he's about to have a session where they rapid fire as many hundred point games as they can do. He plans on covering pretty much all the bases, and he's curious if we'd be able to spitball some hundred point teams that might be plausible. We should do like a one man army, a swarm team, maybe with some autonomous, maybe go fifty fifty kind of thing. The rule gives a minimum of two actions, so leadership wouldn't help that much. So like, yeah, hundred point team. So you have one action. So if you use leadership, you get two actions. What are we thinking about doing, man? What, well, like, it's like, like minimum of two actions anyway. So Yeah, it is. So you get two actions. Well, no, it's... Yeah, it's true. Technically, I think okay. you can't go below two actions, really. I would not... I would not do a one-man army. I don't think that any one 100-point dial is going to be able to offset two 50-point dials. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, sure. There's some one man armies like, oh man, that's insane because they have stop clicks and because they can do this. But I don't know of a single off the top of my head 100 point hero click that is just going to wreck 250s or 520s or anything right. like that. So, so I would say at least stick with a minimum of two characters, and then, I mean, look how many 50 point characters we've been getting recently. So. If I were to build, I would probably just, like, keep it a little fun and get, like, uh, Avengers, Defenders, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist would be, like, a decent little close-up combat, does actual damage type stuff. Or maybe uh, sticking in Avengers, Defenders, you got that, uh, you, you want options, so you got those 
uh, what are they, they switch back and forth. The Vision, the Vision can go close combat or oh, raised yeah, combat, sure. so it's still the same figure, but, so, any kind of those, like, shifting focus that you could fit on there, but still maintain, like, two. That Wasp also does the same thing, so she can go, like, pin Psy, or she can do, like, incapacitate or something. I think she's only, like, 40 points, so those would be good options, because it's going to give you options. On yeah. top of just being a 40-point or a 50-point character. I, I really would not do a 100-point figure. Uh, dude, I wouldn't either. So I thought of a few. Um, one that would be kind of cool is maybe the Kite Man slash maybe use Vulturion instead with the title oh, Captain yeah. America. That would be really cool. Yeah, Kite Man, hell yeah. So I think that would be kind of neat. A little Asugo Alpha Strike going on there. That way you don't you can still only use one action instead of having to use two with Sam Cap. If you can't call people in or whatever their restrictions are, I think the cool one would be like that 50 point vulture and literally any other 50 points, whether it's like President Osborne or if it's a Helion, TKM out, like whatever it is. Um, like you do Helion, Vulture and the Dr. Octopus arms for 100 points even. So that's like a pretty cool team. It's pretty solid. You could also just do a ton of colossal retaliation and have Mangog on your team and try to get him over to his other point lines just because why not, right? Like, if you have a bunch of retaliation, they probably don't have a really effective way to kill all those guys in one turn, and if they retaliate, it's going to hurt. So, like, honestly, playing a bunch of retaliation could work really well, uh, especially with, you know, 10-point giant girls, right? Like, free action to all do it, and then one can power action to do it or charge up and attack normal people anyway, so that's kind of cool. Um... Yeah, so like all sorts of teams like that. That's kind of what I thought of. Uh, there's a few other ones you can always do, but like those are the ones that came to my mind. I also didn't think of any like hundred point characters that would really be worth being your like one man army. Yeah, sorry, I really couldn't think of any like really really good ones. So yeah, um, obviously if it's Golden Age, any robot with Justin Safer, it's like that Vision we just talked about with Justin Safer would be a great Golden Age team, hundred percent. So. There's all sorts of fun stuff with 100-point teams. There's also that one Colson who, if you're under 100 points or something like that, or over 100 there's points, my... you can't target him. The Frit or Batman's Alfred, there's a few other, like, there's, like, a Hobbit one. Who... At 100 Point values, points, stuff like that, you know? At 100 points, if they do run, like, a bunch of retaliators, this might be the one real good opportunity to use that Spiderling. Oh, yeah, also true. Spiderling would be great. Um, if you want to do the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, blah, 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 turtles, I like turtles, the Fast Forces ones, though, that kind of, like, are really hard to kill, those would be kind of cool, you know? Like, I feel like there's a bunch of really solid teams you could do with this crazy restriction on 100, like, only 100 points. Like, for sure. I think there's, a, like, a ton of teams you can make, so that's really cool. All right. Hopefully that helps you out, or at least it gives somebody out there an, an idea of what you could do in the future if you only have 100 points to work with. I, I didn't even think about the Retaliator like team oh, that dude, totally. has like four people on, but four, five, six people on. So that's a really good idea. I didn't even think about that. So Let's get into the Community Tuesdays question that we put up on Facebook and Twitter every week. This week's Community Tuesdays question is, which figure or figures would you choose for a St. Patrick's Day themed game? Calder, do you have an answer to that? Um, you know, I pretty much uh, color green, right? Kite Man, hell yeah, he's green. Guy Gardner, I would like to make just a whole green team. That's pretty much what I would do. I sadly did not get a play this past week. Otherwise, I probably would have tried to bring some kind of all-green squad or whatever. But for sure, Guy Gardner, you know, Kite Man, hell yeah, Hulks, stuff like that. That's what I would do. Sure. I'm going to go with Rainbow Raider because not only is he a rainbow, he, he also has one of the most fun dials like to play ever just because it's funny looking like it doesn't make sense like a lot of the powers don't really make sense together but at least it's flavorful it's really really cool honestly uh jumping on to the first answer on the twitter is going to be rex jungle cat said trinity Wars martian manhunter insane point cost but fun to play Dude, for sure. Uh, Carlos K. Quinones, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, he has the correct answer, and it's Guy Gardner, obviously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Sexy Ranch Hand 2.0, Chance McCall. What? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bullseye because of Colin Farrell, Black Canary, Eric O'Grady, Ant Man, Daredevil, and of course Captain America, all the son of Irish immigrants. So that was a. That Ooh, was a fun yeah. Answer. Brandon Roberts said Banshee, of course. 
Okay. Yeah. Mr. That's Cass- it, yeah. Cassidy, right? That's his last name? Cassidy? Yes. Yeah. Sean Cassidy. Something like that. Um, Jason Levine said the keepers of luck, Domino and Longshot. Good answers. Also, mm-hmm. Scarlet Witch would be a good one in there, too. That's nice. Uh, Superfan Arcade said playing in the game with all green characters. He's doing a whole TMNT theme. He's going with the space TMNT. Right on. Uh, Clicks Roadshow said turtles all day and linked a gif of the turtles playing inside of the elevator making like that sweet music. Oh, dude, great. One of those, one of the most amazing movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, J.R. <laughs> Smith said we're playing 300 points this week. I'm bringing Venom Space Knight, Flash Thompson, Iron Man, Husk. Uh, why, what, how are these guys related to St. Patrick's Day? They've all been drunk in comics. Really? At least he's not okay. trying to, yeah, at least he's not trying to say, like, I'm here for the spirit of blah, 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 blah. He knows what St. Patrick's Day is really about. He knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> it's about chasing snakes out of Ireland. No, it's not. It's, it's bullcrap where it's about drinking. Uh, <laughs> Vigilante Collectible said, with the WWE Hero Clicks coming, maybe we'll get a Finley. Uh, that would be Fit Finley, the wrestler. He's got a gigantic shamrock on his unitard. I think there's like a few Scottish ones. The Scottish side clone or whatever. That's <laughs> McIntyre, Drew McIntyre. Dude, I don't know if I, I, well, I almost said Cyclops. Like, oh, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. But like Drew McIntyre. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's a pretty obvious one. That'd be sick. That'd nah, be odd. I'd be really happy if we got him. Um, Malcolm Rush, the man from Japan. He said Hulk. And I bet you won't disagree with him on being Irish team, even if he's an Irish nod. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would never disagree with Hulk. He would. Uh, he crush. Don't him. disagree with Hulk. No. Nope. Uh, super fan, the ruffian, little plastic superhero said, "I would play my all-time favorite piece, War of Light, Kyle Rayner. After the recent power creep, I wouldn't feel so guilty playing him too." Okay. All right. Nice. Uh, Matthew Esh uh, has this really cool gif of this animated Hal Jordan giving you a thumbs up. I'm like, yeah, nice. Ray W said, "My local venue is doing a." Must have a green power displayed or take one click scenario. Green Oracle uh, and Red Hulk would be on my team. I like it. Uh, Mike Miller said Lady Ock. She is very green. Her sculpt is very green for some reason. And her dial is also very green. It's charged super strength ESD. So, yeah, she fits very well. Sure. Sean Flanagan said the Green Lantern Corps. Nice. David Cologne has this picture of Envy. So, you know, green with Envy, the seventh, seventh, one of the seven deadly sins. Really cool. Chris Kurt said Hawkeye. He's like Green Arrow, only a good character. How <laughs> dare you? Not because Shots fired. you're making fun of Green Arrow, but like, come on, man. It's like so against, ah, oh, look at this guy. Uh, Sarge Machia said Starfire. She's got Starfire? Like, green eyes. Wait. Yeah, I think. Yeah, sure. All right, I, all right, whatever. Go for it. <laughs> Will Miller said, "I think Penguin." Oh, he's making fun of what, last week's episode, the Penguin. Oh. All right. All right. Um, but seriously, probably gonna have to say, I'm gonna say Kite Man because hell yeah. Hell yeah. Seems to me, seems to me Saint it. Patty would say, "Yes, Amen." Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, Jeff Pollier said, "Long shot seems to be an obvious choice to me." A little luck of the Irish there. All right. Jedi Legend said uh, Siren, Banshee, and Black Tom are clear runners, but I'm tempted to run an orange, white, and green lantern formation. If you don't know that, this is the colors of the Irish flag, everyone. That's, yep, that's, that's how really that makes cool. sense. Uh, Wes Betts chart said, hey, this is one for Chris here, Rainbow Raider. This is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's the he's the real answer, man. Vigilante Ben Jones said the Cassidy family. Dude, the Cassidy is getting a lot of love, uh, and yet Cletus is getting like no love at all. Poor poor Cletus Cassidy. The Cassidy it's not really a Cassidy. Poor guy. Ah, uh, Tony Fardo. This is my last uh, answer. Is Black Tom Ca- Black Tom Cassidy? Okay. Uh, and the last one, actually, no, that's second to last one. We have the Big Stabowski said Puck. Because he's the same size as a leprechaun, Mr. Mistletoe, See, because we... he... What, go ahead. Keep going. No, keep okay. going. Mr. Mr. Mistletoe, because he acts like a leprechaun, and a Hulk, because, well, he's green. Dude, thank you. We almost made it through the entire thing without having, like, a leprechaun, like, mentioned at all. I was going to get really bummed. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, that's all I got. That's all I got. I just wanted leprechauns to be part of it, man. 
Okay, I think that's uh, that's it. Qu- oh, quick question. Oh, is that Ryan awesome? Sinclair. Right, yeah, no, we just uh, we're just keeping we're batting equal on Twitter Jeez, and Facebook. Chris, last terrible. like couple it's episodes. Terrible. Um, uh, real question: Rain Sinclair is she Scottish or is she Irish? Who is Rain Wolf Sinclair? Spain. Oh, Wolf Wolf Spain. Spain. Uh, I I don't know. I only read one like book with her in it, and that was the good old uh, good old Man Wolf, Captain America, Cap Wolf book, and that's it. That's all I've ever read about her. I don't know. I don't know her nationality. Okay. All right. Fine. That's all I got. Um. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, let's move on to Hero Clicks, uh, Jedi Legends Hero Clicks tip of the week. Help you, I can. <clears throat> Take you to your destination, I will. All right. So we are going to continue from last week. Remember last week we were talking about energy explosion? Sure. Uh, so he says any splashed piece from energy explosion becomes a target. They are not targeted. Thus, things like shape change. Never affect in that instance. Nice. You fall for it? No, I never do. I know, I know, I know how energy explosion. I actually didn't know this part. I actually didn't know this part. I'm like, yeah, you don't get a roll, your shape change. You get all super senses. Yep. But you become hit, so it's pretty awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, a lot. on on Twitter, we actually got protagonist Michael Miller said, "Oh snap, I have f that up so many ooh, times." Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think that was his revelation moment. He had one of those, like, I'm not going to forget this now. Jedi Legend jumped in. He said, I have to admit, I've been guilty, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess it. Uh, I don't – I feel like at some point I've definitely probably made that mistake, but I don't know if I've made that mistake in a while. I feel you there. I see you. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay. Well, that's uh, the Heroclix tip of the week. Hopefully that helps somebody out there. Um, We don't have any birthdays this week, so if on an upcoming episode you want to get somebody a shout-out with that sexy Arabian happy birthday, just make sure you let us know whose birthday it is, when it is, and we can give that to them. Dial H Home Base Initiative, make sure that you are letting us know you want to claim your territory in an unoccupied state or unclaimed state or country. Let us know what the name of the venue is and claim it for you and for Dial H so that way they can get a nice shout out shout out on the podcast. Um, Calder, why don't you tell me about Red Bubble? Dude, we have a Red Bubble store. It's awesome. You can get all sorts of cool stuff. We still only have two designs, which is the Howdy Howdy, Let's Get Rowdy. It's a cowboy up on his horse, kind of throwing his hat around. It's got a Dial H logo. It's another design, which is just straight up our beautiful, amazingly crafted logo on a shirt. So you can get that on the shirt, stickers. We have people buy it on cuffs. There's seriously a lot of different things. You can get, like, a phone case if you want, and all, like, a little bit of the proceeds go to help the podcast. So if you want to get some really cool stuff, if you want to have a sticker to put on your Clicks box, if you want to wear a shirt to Clicks events and kind of rub up the podcast, you can do that, and you can help support the podcast all in one fell swoop, and I think that's pretty awesome. All right. Well, there you have it. I, I, by the way, while you're saying that, I did look it up. Rain Sinclair is Scottish, not ah, Irish. So I didn't, I didn't want to walk away without with messing that up. So there you go. I think that I'm done in community. Do you have anything else? No, man, I'm done. So I'm ready to read us out of here whenever we're ready. All right. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails. Nice stuff.